Hey there, Boat Dragons, welcome back. I'm glad you could be here. Today, we're gonna find out if Chaz is a moody reader. But before we do, roll the intro. in the Moody Reader book tag by Ariel from Reading and Whatnot. And I was tagged in this book tag a long time ago. Let's just be real here. This was a couple of months ago at least, probably more than that. Ariel, if you're watching, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this book tag. But I'm finally doing it, and I'm excited to do it. So let's get right to it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and, and like the video if you're getting value out of it and having fun. And um, I, I really hope you guys will stick around because I've got lots more coming in the future. So with that being said, here we go. Okay. The first question is, do you consider yourself a mood reader? Yes, I definitely do in two respects. Number one, I have to be in a mood to read, to read. Yeah, yeah. I have to be in a mood to read, to read. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, if, if I'm not feeling like reading, I don't. I just... I won't do it. So that that's the first part of my moodiness when it comes to reading. The second part is I have to be in a mood to read the specific book that I'm currently reading. And, and it may not be the book's fault. I mean, usually the book is really good. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm having fun with it. But Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to keep reading the book that I'm currently reading at that moment. You know, sometimes, sometimes I want something just different. You know, maybe I want to read a graphic novel for a couple of days. Maybe I want to read, uh, listen to an audiobook for, for a couple of days instead. It really depends on my mood and what I feel up to. And... You know, after a long day at work, usually the last thing I want to do is sit down and read and just like, oh, I just, I need to rest my eyes. I'm just going to listen to some music or whatever, just kind of chillax. So that, that is definitely me. I am, I am a very much a mood reader. Question number two, do you set TBRs and do you stick to them? <laughs> no and no. Uh, that is a two-part answer. Both the same answer. I, I don't set TBRs. I set reading goals. Just kind of a general overview of books I want to read for the year. I usually do that at the beginning of the year. But I learned from 2020 that... Set in stone TBRs do not work for me. They 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 just don't. I uh, and and I know 2020 was a weird year in general for all of us. But at the beginning of 2020, I set myself some lofty goals for books I wanted to get read, and I I think I probably didn't read at least a quarter of the list of books that I had planned to read. It just didn't happen. Now, as it stands right now, I'm currently kind of ahead of my Goodreads goal for 2021, but I'm not I'm not putting down in stone any books that I want to read that I'm definitely going to read for 2021. Um, it's kind of like the Pirate Code in Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, if you're familiar with that movie. It's not so much rules as it is guidelines. You know, I, I've set myself some guidelines for books I want to read this year. But yeah, I, I don't do TBRs. And when I do, I, I really don't stick to them because I'm a mood reader, as in question number one. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. I don't often stick to the books that I'm on because I have to be in a mood to be reading them. So, yeah, I don't do TBRs. Um, 
maybe I did it one time, but I've just given up in a good way. Can there be a good way to give up? Yeah, I, I think I think there can. Okay, let, let's move on to question number three. <laughs> Do books affect you emotionally? Oh my goodness, yes. Yes, they do. I, I get extremely emotionally invested in my characters. If there's a sobby moment in the book, I am guaranteed to be one of the few guys in the room who has at least a, one box of tissues and possibly two ready at hand for the weepy moments. That's me. I, I I, I definitely get emotionally invested in my characters. I don't just do that with books. I do it with movies, too. If there's a sad moment in the movie, you can guarantee my kids are going to be looking over at me to see if Dad's crying, because Dad's always crying during the sad parts. <laughs> so, yeah, it's that way with books. And, uh, you know, I, I get angry with things that I feel characters are angry about. I, I get weepy about things that are really heart-wrenching and sad and... And I, you know, I'm crying tears of joy along with my characters in the book when they are happy and, you know, everything has just made them gushing with joy. So, yeah, I, I definitely get emotionally invested. Let's move on to question number four. When you're feeling sad, do you like to read sad, happy, or neutral books? Um, I don't really have a preference there. To be perfectly honest, uh, if I'm sad, I can still read a sad book. You know, maybe I just want to feel sad. I know maybe that sounds weird and kind of chaotic, but there are times that I just want to be in my emotions. And if I'm feeling sad, I'm okay with expressing that and being sad. And sometimes I want to read a sad book. Sometimes I want to read a happy book or a neutral book. It, it really doesn't matter. My, my emotions do not often dictate the type of book that I want to read. Now, granted, uh, when I'm feeling sad, I would like to read something that has some humorous moments in it because laughter is the best medicine for sadness. But it doesn't have to be a completely happy and cheerful book. Whoa, guys, I totally spaced and did not do question number five on this tag. So here it is. I'm including it after the fact. And that question is most often, do you use reading as an escape to learn or to critically reflect? And my answer is most definitely, I use reading as an escape. Rarely do I use it to learn or to reflect. Uh, unless I'm listening to a nonfiction book, I am mostly choosing fiction because uh, I need to escape. And, and that's why I don't read a whole lot of nonfiction, even though I do read some. So, yeah, that's my answer to that. Now, back to the regularly scheduled content. Uh, thank you for allowing this little cut in. Question number six. What is a book that made you laugh out loud? Oh, how much time do we have? I have had so many books that made me laugh out loud. I, I can't even, I can't even count the number of, the number of books and how many times I've laughed out loud in a book. But there are some that stick out in my mind. One of which is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. There were several places in that book where I laughed out loud for several minutes nonstop. It was just that funny. Some of the shenanigans that Richard got into in that book were just, ah, gosh, it is just so, so funny. Neil has a way of writing humor into his characters that is just really good. And then uh, in The Aeronauts Windless by Jim Butcher, one of the characters is a cat named Raoul, and I, I was just, he's one of my favorite characters because his, his lines are just completely hilarious and, you know, sarcastic and cynical, and it's, it's just so funny. 
So yes, but I, I've laughed out loud several times during books. I have a really, really easy sense of humor. We'll put it that way. Question number seven. What is a book that made you cry? And if you don't cry, one that moved you. Okay, so we already established that I cry. So, you know, we're, we're not going to go back to that. Uh, you all know it by now. You know, where's my box of tissues? Or if you're with me, you know that Chaz needs to have a box of tissues if we're reading a book together. It's just, yeah, yeah, that's that. So, yes, I do cry. What is a book that made me cry? Now, see, this is where it gets weird. I don't often remember the books that made me cry. But I know there have been several that did make me cry. Hmm. I mean, there were several moments in the Stormlight Archive that I cried for different characters that I was reading. Um. Oh. Got it. Lord of the Rings. There were there were several moments, uh, especially right at the end. Oh, and here I go. I'm gonna start tearing up. Right at the end, when um, when Sam and Frodo are saying goodbye, and he's about to go off into into the into the heaven of the elves, whatever whatever that is. I think they called it Valinor. Um, but yeah, when they're when they're about to get on the boat and go to Valinor and he's been invited to go with them. Oh I don't like goodbyes. See you later, yes. I don't like goodbyes. That was a tough one. That was a real tough one. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, let's uh let's move on, shall we? Number 8. What is a book you didn't even know how you felt about after? Well, you know this is another tough one. Um a book that I don't wasn't quite sure how to feel. Oh, yeah, so Fahrenheit 451 did that to me. I had very mixed emotions with the end of Fahrenheit 451 because it doesn't, it doesn't completely end. I mean, it does, but it kind of leaves you to draw your own conclusions. And... There are there are ways to think of it in a happy way or in a sad way or in a neutral way, but it, it definitely left me wondering, okay, you know, how should I feel about that ending? So, uh, Fahrenheit 451 is an amazing science fiction novel, by the way. I, I highly recommend it to anyone, anyone. And it's a short book, too. But yeah, that ending really kind of left uh, left me confused about how to, how to feel or how to approach feeling about it. So, yeah, that's my answer to that. Number nine. Are you more likely to read on a sunny or a cloudy day? I'll read on any kind of day. Um... I might be more likely to sit outside and read if it's a cloudy day, just because I really like cloudy days. I I live in Arizona and we get a ton of sun here, probably probably more sun than we really care to have, or at least for me. So uh, I, I'm more likely to sit outside and read on a cloudy day because I really, really love that kind of weather. But... I'll read on any day. It doesn't matter whether it's sunshine, rain, cloudy, ice cold, freezing outside. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'll I'll read any type of day. Come rain nor shine, I will be there with my book. If I'm in the mood for it. <laughs> Question number 10. Do you usually set the mood when you read? 
such as music, lights, smells, etc. I don't really usually. Sometimes I might light a candle. That's pretty rare though. I might put on music, but I, I usually don't like to listen to music when I'm reading. I like to listen to music when I'm writing, but reading, not so much. Now, occasionally, I do turn on the TV and I'll, you know, I'll go to YouTube and they have those fireplaces that you can put on the TV for, it's like an eight hour long fireplace or something like that. And you've got the crackling sounds in the background and it's got the, the fire on the screen and, uh, you know, that, that's the closest I would really come to having a fireplace in Phoenix. Um, so I do that on occasion. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I don't normally really try to set the mood. I Maybe I should. Maybe that would help me be in the mood more. Hmm, might think on that. And the final question, question number 11. Can you leap from book to book or do you need buffer time between? I wasn't quite sure how to take this question. Is it asking me if I can jump from book to book in between the books I'm reading? Like, you know, if I stop reading one and bounce from that book to another one? Because if that's the question it's asking, then the answer would be yes, most definitely. I sometimes have three or four books going at a time and I'll bounce between each one of them. But I'm not sure if that's what this is asking. I don't think it's asking that. So I, I think what it's asking and maybe I'm wrong, is after I've finished a book, do I need buffer time in between before I start another one? And the answer is no on that one. I, I don't need buffer time in between unless I'm at a place where I'm not in the mood to read right away. Then I will take some buffer time. But it solely has to do with my mood. You know, I could be... Like, oh, for instance, uh, The Dark Tower. After I finished The Wastelands, I, was it The Wastelands? I think it was The Wastelands. No. No, it was the second book in the series. Why can't I think of, oh yeah, The Drawing of the Three. There we go. Excuse me for my long and drawn out memory lapse. The, after the drawing of the three, I was so excited to see what happened next that I tried to be pretty quick about getting to the Wastelands, which is book three. So that, um, you know, if, if I'm really excited about a story and I'm in the middle of a series and I've finished one book and I, and I have to get to the next book, then I'll be like, okay, okay, I'm going to pick up the next book and I'm going to start reading it right now. And so, but that, that's rare that that happens, but I have done it. And I feel that way about the Song of Ice and Fire when I read the fifth book, The Dance of Dragons, or A Dance with Dragons. I was ready for book six, and we don't have book six yet. And I was like, oh. So now... When book six eventually releases, and I do have faith in Papa George that he's going to eventually release book six, I will probably have to go back and reread the entire series to prepare myself <laughs> for book six. So we shall see. Uh, I don't know if that will be the case or not, but um, you know, we, we shall see. So, yeah. So that's the end of the Moody Book Tag. And, uh, you know, if you've enjoyed it, I, I really hope you did. And I had a blast doing it. I, I wish I'd gotten to it sooner, but I didn't. And uh, let me know in the comments below some of your thoughts and feelings around these questions. What are some of your answers? I'd love to hear those. And if you've also done this book tag, feel free to leave a link in the comments below so that I can watch your video too. And you know, maybe maybe you're on BookTube and you want to do this book tag as well. I tag you. 
you know, I, that sounds like Pokemon. I choose you. Um, I tag you to do this video if you're watching. I don't know who else to tag, but I, I, I figure if you're watching and you have a book tube, go ahead, feel free, do this book tag and let me know once you've done it. I'd love to watch. <laughs> Um, I do have another book tag video planned for next week, so stay tuned for that. And, and, I am planning on talking about my minimalist practices as a book lover and a booktuber. Probably the video after that. I'm, I'm kind of thinking along those lines. That's the plan anyway, so... Uh, let me know if you're interested about that, and leave me some questions below if you have questions about what it's like to be both a minimalist and a booktuber who loves books, and obviously, you would assume, loves to pick up new books. Um, you know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your questions and add them to my list of things that I should probably answer in that video. Uh, before you leave, I have one final thing to tell you. I and a few other booktubers have formed a book club. It's called the Dragon's Library Book Club, and it is on Discord. So if you're not on Discord, you do need to sign up. It's free to sign up in order to join our Discord uh, you know, book club group. If you're already on Discord, great. You just click the link in the description below so that you can find our book club and join it. We're going to be reading Rage of Dragons for the month of April by Evan Winter. So we'd love to have you join us for that. And uh, should be lots of fun to, to dialogue and interact on that book. And I think that's about it, guys. I hope you had as much fun as I have with this video. Stay tuned for future ones. My name's Chaz, and I'm signing off. Make sure you're reading more books, guys. Take care. Bye.